Okay, okay, sure. So, hey everyone. Thank you so much for making time to come to my talk. I am Brian Kai Manyumba, and today I will be speaking about effective strategies for disability inclusion in open source communities. We have, of course, we've come to COSAP. I presume we are different open source communities around there and we are here to learn together and build our communities. So my talk today will be focused on strategies on which you can make sure that persons with disabilities are included in our open source communities. So I am Brian Kai Manyumba. I am joining you live all the way from Kenya in Africa. So I am so glad to be here. I really appreciate the chance to share with you today. So who am I? Currently, I'm a machine learning apprentice at Omdina. I'm also a GitHub campus expert, and I'm so glad to be here. I'm also a co-organizer at Luna Hacks, which is a yearly hackathon that happens in Kenya, specifically Rift Valley. And in this, and in Luna Hacks, I help the diversity, equity, and inclusion in streaming committee to help in ensuring that we have Event. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay, great. You can hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, okay, sure, sure. So, <coughs> that's nice. So, I, so, I was just introducing myself. I also volunteer at Open Source Community Africa. Yeah, you can come closer since I feel like it's. <laughs> you can come closer so you can hear me clearly. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Uh, just yeah, nice. We're just so, problem, so um, as I was introducing right. myself, I am a machine learning apprentice currently working at Antina. I am also a GitHub campus expert and also I co organize Luna Hacks, which is a yearly hackathon that happens in the Rift Valley region of Kenya, bringing together students from different universities to build stuff that solve problems they've always wanted to solve. I also volunteer at Open Source Community Africa Nairobi. So Open Source Community Africa Nairobi is a community of open source enthusiasts, just trying to spread the gospel of open source. I also am also a technical writer and I've dedicated my technical writing skill to diversity, equity and inclusion. Therefore, I write for Shikod Africa Nairobi and Pi Ladies Ghana. It is where I write specifically to help ladies get foot into machine learning and Python. I also write for different blogs. I also, when I'm not coding or speaking or doing community stuff, I skate, I swim, and I also love drumming, but I haven't been consistent with drumming. So that's me. So just to get us started, I want us to understand exactly what disability is in our different communities. So disability is any physical, sensory, mental, or other impairment, including any visual, hearing, or physical incapacity, which impact, which has impact on social, economic, and environmental participation of this individual. But many times we throw disability and impairment just as a catch-all word. So today I want to explain what exactly disability is and what impairment is. So a disability is any condition of the body or mind which, which of mine, of mine now is the impairment part that, that makes it more difficult for a person with a condition to do certain activity. So you have, so you like, have like activity, which we call it as activity, activity limitation, and to, and to interact with the world around them. That is participation restrictions. restrictions. So, you have, so you have activity limitation and participation restrictions, which is which is carried for in disability. And now you have, now you have impairment. impairment. Impairment is defined as a loss of abnormality of psychological or physiological or anatomical structure or function. The impairments, the impairments of, of some organs, organs or functions can be considered as disability. So we, so we need to understand all our community members in our open source community. What kind, what kind of disabilities do they have? What kind, what kind of impairments do they have? And what, and what can, can we do as open source community members or open source community leaders to make sure that they are included in our community activities and they are able to participate effectively? So let us look at where we are currently with 
the idea, the idea of persons with disabilities. So, so globally, globally, it is estimated that disability affects 10% to 15% of adults, which 470 million of them are predicted to be of working age. So you can imagine the number of persons with disabilities we have all around the world. And if I just shoot a question to you right now, how many persons of disabilities do you have in your community? I'm sure it's not the number that is supposed to be there. So persons with disabilities experience high levels of unemployment this economic exclusion deprives society of an estimated us dollars 1.37 to 1.94 trillion in annual loss to gdp so you can imagine us excluding persons with disabilities in our Economic, economic activities that is in open source communities. You can imagine how much this money could have been used to impact open source community communities all around the world. So, so the limited number, number of persons with disabilities that manage to take employment occupy entry level jobs, which of course have low pay. So they don't occupy leadership positions even in our present community. So it's kind of hard for them. And also, women with disabilities have worse employment rates and wages than men with disabilities. So you, so you can imagine that 80% of persons with disabilities in the world live in, live in rural areas of developing, of developing countries, countries with limited or no access to opportunities and services. So that, so is, that is why during my talk I will share how we can, can we can have referral, referral strategies to make sure that we have these 80% of people, persons with disabilities, are included in our op op opportunities, we share with them opportunities at open source communities and all, and all that. that. So, so the key, the key disability, disability inclusion budget that we have currently includes, includes skills, skills deficit, high unemployment, high unemployment poverty, poverty, and, and marginality. But I said 80% of these persons with disabilities live in the rural, rural areas, areas of developing, developing countries. So, so they are not in, about, about, I don't know, but I can just maybe just, maybe just catch up with all of the organizers. How many persons of these disabilities are in this, are in this conference today? today? So, that so that we can see how many of them are represented in our congregation. So you can imagine. Only 20% Only 20 of them probably, since 80% of them are already not in, in urban, urban areas. areas. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so now, so now I, want I want us to talk about disability, disability inclusion. inclusion. We, now we now know what disability is and where, where we are currently with disability, with disability and inclusion. And inclusion. So, so let's, let's see how can, how can we include persons, persons with disabilities, disabilities in our communities. Our communities. So, so I'll just I'll give, just a, give a broad overview of inclusion from, from the outside, the outside and view and then come inside, inside specifically to open source communities. communities. So, so with inclusion, with inclusion, inclusion, inclusion means being accepted and recognized as an individual beyond the disability. So, so even, even if, if someone, if someone has, has a disability, you should be able to accept and recognize them beyond that disability. Also, also they, should they should be able to have personal relationships with family, with family friends, friends, acquaintances, acquaintances open source community members. members. They should be able to hold those personal relationships with everyone. With everyone. Inclusion, inclusion means being involved, involved in recreational activities and social, social activities. activities. Social, social activities, activities like this one, attending, attending conferences, attending, attending, attending several events, events or, or participating, participating in different Stuff, the staff in, in our communities having, having appropriate living accommodation so they should, so they should also have appropriate living accommodation they should, they should have, have employment, employment or at least leadership, leadership positions in our open source communities and also, and also they should, they should have, have appropriate formal and informal support. So we, so we need to support them formally and informally. Because, you know, because, you know we cannot put out, put out the fact, fact that someone is, someone is disabled, disabled, but you also, also need, need to understand how can we tap into the talent of this, of this person who is disabled. disabled. Yeah, I love, yeah, I love the fact that some of you are taking notes. I really, <laughs> I really love that. So, so let's proceed. Let's proceed. Now, now, we've talked, we've about, talked this about this type of, type of inclusion. inclusion. Now, I want, now, I want us to talk about, about disability inclusive development, development in open source. So, so disability, disability inclusive development, development in open source seeks to, seeks to ensure full participation, full participation of, people of people with disabilities, with disabilities as empowered self advocates. advocates. So, they so, they need to be empowered, empowered self advocates. In the, in the development processes of our open, of our open source, source communities and emergency, and emergency responses, and, and it works, it works to, address to address the barriers, the barriers which hinder their, their access, access and participation. And participation. So, we so we are not only seeking to ensure full participation, participation of these persons, persons with disabilities, but also, but also empower, empower them to be self-advocates in the development processes or in, or in these open source communities in sharing information and also, and also in emergency responses and works to address the barriers which hinder their access and participation. They want to which what are the barriers that are hindering them in accessing our community or in participating in our community and what can we do? 
So, so that is what, that is what disability, disability inclusive, inclusive development, development seeks to achieve in open source. So, so but you can but always, you can always be the change you want to see. For, for those, those in this room like right now, you can go ahead and do what, do what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'll, what I'll share today in your different communities. So, so we need... We need as, we, as, as, we, as I said, we can be the change, be the change you've always wanted to see. So how can, so how can we, we be the change you've always wanted to see? How can we, how can we make sure these persons with disabilities are included in our open source community? One, one transformational, transformational leadership that will relentlessly, relentlessly question the status quo of systems, of systems paradigms, paradigms, assumptions, assumptions patterns, patterns, and habits with a view, with a view to developing and applying new strategies, initiatives, initiatives and, management and management theories to realize change. So we, so we want, want to realize, realize change in our communities. So we need, so we need to come up with transformational leadership. I'm sure maybe some of those joining us here are GitHub Campus experts. Some of those, some of those joining us here are leaders in their communities. So how can we have transformational leadership which relentlessly questions the status quo of systems, paradigms, assumptions, and patterns? And habits, and habits with a view, with a view to developing and applying new strategies, initiative and management theories to realize change. The next thing, the next thing we can do as people in this room is creating a compelling vision for social change. So, so we need to, we need to see change in our society. So let's, so let's create a compelling vision for social change. So this strategic alignment requires leaders. And by leaders I mean us. We are, we are all leaders in our open source community. We are all CEOs of our open source community. We are all, we are all there to make sure that we can bring the change. So this strategic alignment requires leaders, which is us, you listening to me, to understand the social inequalities and injustices that antagonize marginalized social groups, whether they be internal or external to our communities. And see, and see what, what we can do. And then, and then open source communities need a referral program when sharing, when sharing opportunities and leadership, and leadership positions together with, together with internal disability project. disclosures. So for example, so for example we, can we can be having people in our communities that are disabled, but their, dis but their disabilities are not physical disabilities. Physical disabilities. So, you're not so you're not able to like tell by just looking at a person that they are disabled. That disabled. So, we so we need to come up with strategies, strategies where, where one is able to disclose to our community members, to one of the community that hey, I'm not, I'm not feeling comfortable, comfortable doing this because I have, I have this and this condition. And we also, and we also need a referral program. One thing, One thing is we don't have persons with disabilities in our communities because we don't, we don't even know where they are. So we, so we, we need, we need to have a referral program with several disability groups or people, or people which, which can refer to us persons with disabilities so that we can include them in our plans. And then, and then building, building disability into existing agendas and not, and not merely adding separate disability activities. So we need, so we need to build these agendas into, into our, existing our existing agenda. agenda. We need to build disability into our existing agendas and not just like having it, having it as a separate idea or as a separate thing. We need to, we need to have it inside our, our existing, existing agendas. agendas. But, but most, most important, importantly, we need, to, we need develop to develop an education, education and awareness program as a community, as, a community, as, your, own as your own open source community, community that seeks to challenge, challenge the normalized the economic able-bodied notions. You know, we, you know, have, we have able-bodied notions that, hey, I'm able-bodied, like I don't have any disability. And these, and these notions, 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 they don't, they don't intentionally do this, but they unintentionally operate, operate as an instrument of exclusion, prejudicial treatment, and unfair discrimination. So they do this unintentionally. They don't want to do it, but they do this unintentionally. And hence, we need to we need, to, we need to be intentional about this. We need to sit down and develop an awareness program with our communities and with different support programs that have persons with disabilities in them. We also, we also need to refocus our attention on the human, on the human ability to perform a task and not, and not necessarily ignore the existence of an impairment. So instead, so of, instead of viewing someone as someone with a, with a disability, let's refocus our attention on the human ability to perform a task, the human, the human ability to speak at this event, the human ability to help someone learn JavaScript, the human ability to be a leader and not necessarily ignore the existence of an impairment, but explore human capability with the intent of unleashing the human talent alongside the impairment. So, so let's not view, let's not view the impairment alone, but let, but let us understand, understand what talent, talent can we unleash in this person while still, while still helping them in, in building, building and 
showing us, showing us their talent. So, so now, now I've, talked I've talked to you about, about all this, but when you, but when you go, go to your different, different communities, communities there's, 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 you cannot you just speak to this to your CEO or to your, or community, to your community leaders. You need something tangible you can share with them. That is why I'm sharing with you today what is called disability mainstreaming. So this is a program that you can sit down, write it up in a word document or come up with this with this, with this disability mainstreaming work plan and, and share with the community leader that hey, I went, I went to this conference to talk about disability mainstreaming. They shared with us this strategy, strategy and this is how we can use it in our communities. So, so what, is what is disability mainstreaming? Disability, disability mainstreaming is a strategy for making, for making the concerns and experiences of persons with disabilities an integral dimension of the design. Of the design Design, design implementation, implementation monitoring, monitoring and evaluation of policies, of policies and programs, and programs in, our co in all our community spheres so that, so that persons with disabilities have the same access to utilities, to utilities as persons without disabilities. disabilities. So, so we want, we want to, to have these have this strategies that, that make the concerns and, and experiences of persons with disabilities an integral, an integral dimension, not, not a side thing, but an, but an integral dimension of the design, design implementation, implementation, monitoring and, and evaluation of policies and and programs in all our community spheres. So, so let's look, let's at, the look at the different methods of disability mainstreaming. So, so I've talked, I've talked about, about some of these, these and these are the things that you can even add to this list in your different, in a different communities because different communities have different needs. So, so one, one is disability awareness, awareness training or sessions person and persons with disabilities person. empowerment. So, so worldwide, we usually have a day for persons with disabilities. So, so what, effort what effort has your community made during this day? Are you have you tried to empower your community members that, hey, we have this training session or this session where inviting people with disabilities who are good in this technology side to come and share with us. Also, also we, need we need to have accessibility to physical facilities and premises and ensuring accessible event venues. So, for example, where you are sitting right now listening to me, is that venue accessible to someone who is on a wheelchair? Is that venue ac accessible to someone who is not able to, like, see? Do you have, like, closed caption interaction while I speak? Someone who is not able to see clearly can at least get closed caption while I'm speaking. Is that venue, like, really accessible to someone who is can, can have a different disability? So you see, we need to have our event venues or our physical facilities accessible. Another thing is offering leadership positions and retention. We not only offer them leadership positions, but you offer leadership positions to them and retain the persons with disabilities in different areas of our community. Offer them, offer them leadership positions and retain them. Another thing is creation of policies, procedures and practices that guarantee mainstreaming. So we need, so we need to create policies inside our communities and procedures and perform practices that will guarantee mainstreaming in our communities. And then, the and then the last and most important thing is setting up, setting up a disability mainstreaming committee. Just the, Just the way in your community you have a data science lead, you have, you have an open source lead, you have, let's say, a front-end developer lead, you have a flatter lead. We also need to have someone or a committee that leads the disability mainstreaming that says that, hey, this is an agenda and you want to see it come to life. So, so what, are the, what are the steps towards disability mainstreaming and inclusion? So now, so now here is the practical part. Here is where, here is where you get to see what steps, what steps can, can you take, what, what effective, effective steps, steps you are able to take to ensure that you have, have, disa you have disability mainstreaming and inclusion, and inclusion in, your in your communities. So let's, so see, let's the see the first step. step. So the, first so the first step is you, is you set up a disability mainstreaming committee. committee. Just, the, Just way the way you have different leads in your, in your community. community. I'm sure you have maybe, a, maybe a data science lead, lead an event organizer lead, lead, a program, a program lead, lead, you know, you know all that. All that. We, also we also need, need to set up disability mainstreaming committee, committee in, our in our communities. But, but you can, you can ask, ask me, okay, how, how, how what what is this committee, committee, committee going to contain? So let's, so see, let's that. see that. What, Dema, is what is the mandate of this mainstreaming committee? committee? What, are they, what are they going to be doing? So the mandate, so the mandate of this mainstreaming committee is they act as a focal point on disability-related issues in the community. They are, they are going to be the ones ensuring that disability issues are spoken out and are heard of. The second thing, it guarantees the inclusion of persons with disabilities in the community activities. Also, also, it puts, it puts a measure, measure to ensure the realization of where at least 5% of all community members are persons with disabilities. So, so for, example, for example, if in this talk, at least 5% of all the, the, attendees the attendees sitting in my talk should be, should be persons with disabilities. At least now giving them a chance to learn, a chance, a chance to upskill, 
and a chance, and a chance to, share. to share. Also, also it, promotes it promotes the principle of universal design, design in planning, the planning, implementation, implementation monitoring, monitoring and evaluation of the community's core mandate, programs, programs, projects and activities. So, so I, will I will share this slide with you just, just for the essence of time. I will, I will try and, and summarize everything, but this slide will be shared with you so that you can go ahead, catch up more and even implement some of these things. Second the second thing, thing is they promote, they promote awareness, awareness creations, creations on disability issues and form positive attitudes towards, towards persons of disabilities. They also, they also submit a standardized quarterly disability mainstreaming progress report following, following a community specific framework. framework. So, so they should they, they should be able to submit a quarterly report on what what do they want to achieve and where, and where are they in ensuring that disability persons with disabilities are included in these communities. So, so what, is the, what is the composition of this committee? What does, what does this committee contain? You can best me, okay, we want to form this committee in our community, but who will, who will it contain? If you contain a senior community member who acts as a chair of the committee, so like, so like this will be the lead, then it will contain a member of the community resolution board executive, or executive that will ensure the presentation of disability issues at the decision making level. So high the decision making level, someone will be able to like have this. At the top, we have a member of the community, executive board, then we should have at least 30% of persons person with disabilities in this community. committee. But if, but if you currently have none in your community, it's okay. They can, they can be joining you as you already have this plan rolling. And then, and then the, committee the committee should appoint someone with disability, someone, someone who will, who be, will the be the focal person, person who acts as, as its secretary and last one with committee, with committee stakeholders. stakeholders. For example, in the community, we have different diversity and inclusion sponsors. So this is the person who will be sharing the reports or speaking to all the stakeholders and sponsors, and sponsors who support, support your, your disability, disability mainstreaming agenda, agenda in your community. Your community. That was, the, that was the first step. We form, we form a disability mainstreaming committee. committee. The, second the second step, step is formulating a disability mainstreaming action plan. So, so we, need we need an action plan to help, to help us do all, do all this. So, so after establishment and training, so what, so I'm, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm educating you. So you'll also, so you'll also take this knowledge to them. After you've established and trained the committee on disability mainstreaming, the committee, the committee shall formulate an action plan based on the identified levels of mainstreaming. So like form an, a, a plan and then you, you, you form a plan that will help you guide in the actions, the actions you're going to take. And then the, and then the next thing is objectives and activities in the plan should be implemented based on specific areas as identified in the performance indicators within specific reporting quarters. So we have different performance indicators. For example, you, I'm sure you always conduct performance reviews in your organization. So that is the same thing. You conduct performance reviews in your community, seeing how we increase this person with disabilities and how can we support them, support them more. even more. The third, the third thing, thing is implementing, implementing the disability mainstreaming action plan. You know, it's, you know, one, it's one, one thing to come up with a plan and it's another thing to actually implement that, that plan. plan. So, so in implementing, in implementing the, plan, the plan, implementation is based on specific areas. For example, you notice that you don't have any person with disability who is a leader in your community. So, so you, you say that you want to have leadership position. So it is based on specific areas of your community identified in the performance indicators within specific reporting quarters. quarters. So, so this, quarter, this quarter you can be focused on something else. Next quarter you can be focused on something else as we move on, as we move on. So, so implementation, implementation is based on those specific areas. areas. And then, and then the, fourth the fourth thing is monitoring, monitoring and evaluation. We need to, we need to see, see is, it, is, is this thing working or, or is it not working? What can, what can we do better? You know, you know we, we need to see all, see all that. that. So, so it is, it is important to conduct both pre and post assessments across, across each of the identified levels of mainstreaming and, and these forms of evaluation help inform the position, the position of the community on disability mainstreaming and planning for possible steps to be taken to, be taken to fill in the identified gap. So we plan for possible steps to fill in the identified gap. Like what was it before and what is it after and what can we do? So, so I want them to show you what, what you can so have. This so this exactly is exactly what, what you can build. Like you can have something like this. An official, an official form, you can have it on an Excel sheet. It's not as simple as possible. You can have, you can have it on, a, on an Excel sheet or somewhere where you have, for example, here's just the number. Then, then what, level what level of mainstream? For example, in the level of mainstream, you can have like leadership. And then, and then what are the objectives? Objectives is to have more people, more people with disabilities in leadership positions. What are the strategies you're going to take? 
for example, uh, for example we'll be reaching out to persons with disabilities and giving, and giving them like uh, 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 an affirmative action, action when selecting, selecting leaders and then, and then the, the timelines time from what from time, what time, time, what time, time do you want to have to have this like this is this in the first quarter the second quarter the third quarters and then who is responsible to ensure that this thing actually comes to pass is it you now you now give here the name of the person who should be responsible for this and who, and who and will, will ensure that this actually, actually comes to realization? And then, and then we'll talk, we'll talk this, this builds, builds up. up. So we have this table here. So for example, level of assessment, event, event venue, physical, physical facilities and premises accessibility, auditing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're auditing about the event venue. And then, and then the, tool the tool will be using a physical facilities and premises audit tool to help us do this. And then the explanation, this assessment seeks to identify event venues, physical facilities and premises access needs all the way from main entrance to service areas. So you can see, this is an example of a table that you can use to, to in your work plan, like, like ensuring, ensuring that you have, you have thought about, thought about this and are intentional about ensuring this is, this, is this, comes this comes to pass. To pass. And, then, and then, submission, submission of quarterly reports. Open source, open source communities, communities are transparent, are transparent communities. communities. If, you if your community has GitHub sponsors or something, you, you need to make everything public. You need to tell the public what exactly, what exactly you are doing and where you are at. So. so the fifth, the fifth thing is submit your quarterly reports, reports to the general public. public. Maybe, you can, Maybe you can do just a publishing a blog or just, or just have a, a, an official, official report being published in the annual general, general meeting or something. So, so the, report the report or reports which are made, which are made public for transparency because we are open source communities and we are driven by volunteers and we all need, they all need to know what you are doing are based on specific disability mainstreaming indicators in the performance review. So we have different indicators and performance reviews. It should highlight the progress made by the community against the objectives. So what are the objectives and what have what progress have you made? And strategies as outlined in the disability mainstreaming strategy action. Plan. plan. So you can, so you can have this format. format. So you have, so you have like disability mainstreaming objective in your in report. report. So this, so can, this be can be like even an article. article. It's not a must be a table, but you can, but you can have these subheadings, even an article, article or report. So what, so what, what are the disability mainstreaming objective? What activities, what activities did you do? What are the, what are the performance indicators? What were, what were the outputs and any remarks? So was it done better? Was it not done better? You know, all these things that we need to see. So, so, but we know, but we know one, one tree cannot, cannot form a forest. A forest. We, all we all need to come together and realize this change. change. We, I, cannot I cannot only do this alone, but we can do this, can do this together. together. So, we, so need we need to all come together and make sure that these persons person with disabilities are included in our communities. This is something that we are trying to achieve at Open Source Community Africa and Nairobi, together with all the different communities I help organize or volunteer at. So, so yeah, yeah. I, am I am like three minutes, three minutes to the end of, the my, end of time. my time. So now, so now I, will I will open the floor to any questions, questions or if anyone, if anyone wants, wants any clarification, clarification on, something, on something. Of course, of course let me just, of course you, of course you can reach out to me in case you have any questions via email. Let me just hold up my email. Yeah, in the section. Okay. Feel free to reach out to me. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, very thank you for your talk. I'm like, I really love it. Anybody has a question here? Okay. Hi. Uh, super thank you for sharing in a very pragmatic uh, way. Um, I really appreciate it. Mm, I have a question about how do you reach out the community um, in a tactical but also a uh, sensible way so how do you um, how do you make people with disabilities approach your community without forcing them to be part for the sake of having the disability does it make sense yeah it makes sense so maybe you answer that question so the first thing you your community needs to be welcoming so, for example, you need to have in this talk, if they, we, we needed to have like a sign where, you know, there's a specific sign where if.
left his email. email. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, he left his email, email in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> okay, before, before he blocked yeah. 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that was a, that was a good talk. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. good. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm just you know, keeping an eye and being conscious of it actually at the moment. What was that? It's okay. It's bad. He's out. Okay. okay. So, in my company, we so far have been hired like to do disability related folks. Yeah. Um, but that's more like needs driven where we want to hire someone who is like visually impaired as well as hearing impaired. It's accessibility testing, yeah. but it's not like intentional that we are trying to support the community. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always curious to like hear like what are successful like programs that help to blend like both supporting the community and like empowering folks with like the skills necessary so that you know they, they work just like anyone else. But you know, for us, it's very restricted to the business needs which is want to be accessible. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. welcome. Hey. We're still here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. So, so let me just answer, answer your question. question. I know, like, I don't want to take, take the other speaker's time, time. So, so let me just answer your question. question. So, so what you can, can do here is ensure that your community feels welcoming to, 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 to get in this. For example, we have all these sign language signs you can have. For example, if you are your event has a sign language interpreter you can have that sign in the poster for the event also you can have a picture of a wheelchair or someone sitting on a wheelchair at that event in that event poster so that someone feels like oh i'm welcome to train this community and then another thing is have a referral program let's say you can have a referral program so instead of you like just reaching wanting them to reach out to you reach out to these organizations. I'm sure you have different organizations or, for example, not only in the community, we have a refugee camp nearby. So what we do is we have created a referral program with them that if we have any person with disability, we have training sessions for them. So we train them. So we equip them with skills through the referral program of that refugee camp. So they, they connect to us in case there's anyone who has disabilities and want to do anything tech stuff. We go there every weekend, train them, then once, once they are trained, we we'll give them a chance, chance to lead our, our community. So we have seen all these, all these can be things that can help you attract them to your community instead of like forcing them to come in and actually do the thing in your communities. So I think those are some of the things. Have measures, make sure that the event has been tagged, it's accessible. Let's say someone can even present when they're in their wheelchair and all that. So I hope I answered your question. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to take a picture? Yeah, I would love to take a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take a screenshot if you want. Okay. Yeah. So let me just take a screenshot. So, so I just put my head here. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I really like, like your topic and I really like the whole presentation. I mean, I truly mean it. I really love it. And thank you for coming today. Okay, bye. Yeah, thank you so much. And you, also, you're going to hear the clapping, right? And so everybody clapping. <laughs> what were you trying to say? I was just saying, in case you want to have photos, I shared with Zoe a uh, Google yeah, Photos album, mm -hmm. which, which you can also add in case you also took photos during this session, and I'll be sure to tag all of you. Also, 
you can drop probably any of you can drop your twitter handles in the chat section and they can also tag you or your social media handles and they can also tag you i dropped my email also in case anyone wants to reach out on the same i'll be glad to assist Okay. okay. All, right. all right. So, like, so reach, reach out, out to out him. To like, make a friend, make a connection with him. All right. So it's so about it's a lunch time. So you go to get your lunch, and we are going to get our lunch. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.